Welcome back. My name is Ellen and I am a twin mom, but I'm also a speech language pathologist. So feel free to subscribe to this channel if you're interested in seeing speech pathology or twin mom related videos and follow me on Instagram at it's twins one if you want to connect with me more personally. I am gonna be starting something new here on my channel that I am really excited about. I'm gonna combine my role as a twin mom with my role as a speech language pathologist and start making videos for you. So the way it'll kind of work, as my twins grow, they're only 10 months right now, they were two months premature, so they kind of have the developmental skills of like an eight month old. As they grow, and as I use my speech therapy techniques with them on a daily basis, I thought, why not share them with you and kind of explain to you why I'm doing what I'm doing and how you can also incorporate these types of activities with your babies too, just, you know, for fun. Each video that I'm gonna make will have a topic like a skill that we're working on. And then I'll kind of give you a little background on why we're working on it so you can understand like the rationale behind everything. Then I'll give you some concrete, easy, basic activities that you can incorporate on a daily basis. But just a quick disclaimer, if your child already has an existing diagnosis that has impacted his or her speech and language development and you know you're gonna have to have speech therapy, check out the link in my description to Toddler Talk. It's a link to an ebook that I trust. I think it's a really good resource for you. I'm recommending this because I know that people now at home are in charge of their kids' education and learning. And online therapy is great, but for babies at this age, <laughs> toddlers, it's really hard to actually get their attention, you know, to focus on a computer screen at this young age. So this ebook can kind of give you the tools to be the speech therapist in the beginning because I just know how the online therapy works and online treatment sessions work. It's tricky. So I'll put a link to that in the description if you want to check that out for yourself if you know you are in need of some speech therapy for your kid. Okay, now the intended audience for this video, parents and caregivers of 10 month old babies, speech pathologists like early intervention speech pathologists, speech grad students, and you know, if you're interested in this kind of stuff, like I am, then you can watch too. These activities are gonna be appropriate for typically developing children and for children who have existing diagnoses that impact their language development. All right, so the topic of today's video is turn-taking. Now, I don't mean like playing nicely with your little friends. I mean the pragmatic skill of turn-taking. Language is broken into five different domains. There's phonology, morphology, semantics, syntax. We're not gonna worry about any of those, but then pragmatics. Turn-taking is a pragmatic skill. You know, pragmatics are all those non-linguistic language skills. So like body language, facial expression, yada, yada, yada. Turn-taking is the skill that will teach your child the bulk of communication skills at this early age. Okay, so turn-taking activities will teach your child three foundational skills. One, it'll teach them the back and forth nature of communication. I take a turn and you take a turn. We go back and forth and we have a nice little conversation. The second skill that is targeted during turn-taking activities is receptive language. So it's just understanding language. So if you're just giving a child a very basic command, asking them a simple question, saying something nice and basic, you're teaching the child to listen to something and comprehend it and then follow through with it. So that would be receptive language. Then expressive language. There are turn-taking activities that will prompt a baby to request something. Now at this young age, a child will not be saying, can you please hand me my ice cream cone? Or they won't even be saying, mommy, more, or they won't be saying please, or they won't be saying cookie. <laughs> They're not gonna say anything. The first word doesn't usually emerge until 12 months old. Even though your baby's probably saying things like ma, 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 da, 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 da. If they're not assigning that to a specific person, intentionally using it to request something, you know, it's not a true word. But it's fun to think that they're actually talking. Okay, but anyway, requesting. So at this age, if you do a turn-taking activity where you pause and you are, are prompting them to request something 
from you. A request can be communicated at this age by an eye gaze or by reaching for something. So like if they want the spoon, they could look at the spoon, they could reach for the spoon, they could clap, they could flail their arms, they could turn their head, they could coo, they could scream, they could babble. If you pause and give them the opportunity to request during a turn-taking activity, that I would reward as a communicative attempt. Now, on to some practical applications. I'm gonna give you five different activities. There are so many, but I'm only gonna do five to keep it easy and simple and realistic. The first couple of activities I'm gonna recommend are actually during mealtime. I'll tell you why mealtime is probably the absolute best place to do turn-taking activities. First of all, because there is something highly motivating to them, their food. There is something that you know that they have to request. So perfect time to do some requesting. The second reason mealtime is so great is because it's a multi-sensory experience. They are stimulating their sight, taste, touch, sound, smell. Now you're gonna get their language going and they're just gonna be so excited for mealtime because they can look forward to experiencing so much, so much greatness. And research does show that the more senses that are stimulated during an activity, the more likely the brain is to hold on to that information and really effectively store it and use it. So mealtime is great because they've got all the senses stimulated. And the last reason that mealtime is so great is because it's one of the only times during the day that you guys are gonna be completely engaged with one another. You're at eye level with your babies. They're contained in a chair and you can get their full attention most of the time. It's really hard to do these kinds of activities with a 10 month old baby who's like running all over the place, flipping around during a diaper change, splashing water everywhere in the bathtub and you're stressed out. Meal time is a time that you can now control that environment and set the stage for communication every single meal time. What I would encourage you to do is like put your phone away during meal times and truly just give all of your attention to your babies and let them know like you have my full attention right now and this is what's happening. We're communicating and that way you're gonna get a really good communication activity out of them. If you're not engaged with your babies, if you don't have their full attention, not much is gonna happen. So that's, that's what mealtime offers. Attention, bonding, connection, and you know, food. Okay, this is exciting. The first activity is going to be a spoon feeding, turn taking activity. Literally just feeding the baby and avoiding the temptation to shovel food into their mouth. You're gonna pause before you give them a bite and ask them if they want more. Ask them to request more. I would recommend you use this carrier phrase, their name, pause, followed by, do you want another bite? Pause. Pauses are very powerful with babies. So for example, I would say, Gabriel, and he, something that he's liking to do now is like tilt his bib up over his face. And so I'll say, Gabriel, and he'll lower the bib, look at me, and I'll be like, you want another bite? And he's like, it's so cute. He literally looks like he's, calculating, processing, oh yeah, yeah, I want another bite. And he realizes he has to do something. So it's a very simple exchange. Name, pause. Do you want another bite? Pause. Give them a chance and then, you know, let them request and give them their food. So like I said before, a request at this age is going to be looking at the spoon, looking at the food, opening their mouth, lunging forward, reaching for the spoon, grabbing the spoon, flailing their arms, actually going, ah, or vocalizing something. All those basic little communicative attempts, they are communicative attempts. So you're gonna reward it with a bite. Now, if your baby literally does nothing and just sits there and stares at you, and you've paused and you've repeated yourself, just give them the bite. But what you do is don't get discouraged and keep doing it because consistency is key. Don't let that get you defeated. You're gonna establish this as part of your routine. Every single bite, there are so many bites that are gonna happen. 
you have time to learn that skill. So the next turn-taking activity has to do with transitions and songs. So I transition from each activity, each routine during the day with a song. The way I make this a turn-taking activity is I have paired the song with a gesture, a very basic gesture, waving. So I say, goodbye food, goodbye food, goodbye food, we had some fun today. Then I say, thank you food, same thing. Thank you, food. Thank you, food. Thank you, food. We had some fun today. Yay! Clap, 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 clap. You do it. <laughs> I literally just did my transition song with you. But I always, before I do the transition song, I always wave. I model it for them. And I say, wave, boys, wave. And I pick up their hand and I make it wave. They never wave with me. <laughs> That's fine, but I'm still doing it every single time, waiting for the day that they wave with me. So I say, wave to the food boys. I sing the song, and then at the end of the song, when I clap, I go, yay, clap, 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 clap. I say clap, and I clap. Then I say, you do it. <laughs> you can ask that of your baby. You say, you do it. You do it. You do it. I say that seriously all the time now. So in the same, fashion that I make their hands wave. So I always wave, I say wave, I pair the word with the gesture, then I take their hand and I do a hand over hand wave and try to prompt them to wave. I do that same thing with clapping. I'll go, yay boys, clap, 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 clap. I say clap and I clap and I say you do it and wait. And then I clap, 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 take their hands, clap them together, and I say clap, 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 while I clap their hands together. And then after I do that, once they have that little uh, muscle memory, is when I immediately take advantage of it, I say, you do it, clap, 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 clap. And then once their hands are already in this position, they'll go, <laughs> like once or twice, or they'll just slam their hands on the table. And at that point, I say, oh, yay, clap, 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 clap. You do it. And it's this whole back and forth thing. My husband's into it. We're all having fun with the clap, clap, claps. And the boys love it. They don't do a nice, clean clap at this age, which is fine. But they take turns with me. They wait while I clap. And I say, you do it. They do some kind of a flail, a slap, a pat, a tap, and I say, oh, yay! And it's a super fun, exciting thing. I know that that was a lot, but that's kind of just like what I literally do every single day, and I think it's really fun. The next activity will be during story time, and you will be prompting your child to interact with the book by turning the page, opening it, or closing it, or opening or closing flaps inside of the book. At this age, your baby will not be picking up a book and like very fluidly turning the pages. That's not gonna happen for a little while. But what they will be doing is touching the book, looking at the book, trying to turn the pages, chewing on the book, slapping it, and just kind of becoming aware with the orientation of a book. Like a book goes like this, I open it and there are pages inside. And I think there are letters on there, but I don't know what those mean. I'm gonna do a whole video on literacy and books for babies because that's very exciting and there's a lot to cover there. But turn taking with a book. Yes, you can always from the very beginning ask that they turn the page and always model it first. So as you read the story, obviously you're gonna be very animated. <gasps> turn the page. And they're gonna be like, oh, what? <laughs> and you be like, turn the page, boys. And you actually turn it for them. And you can turn it back and say, you do it. Or you just simply model it, turn it back and say, turn the page. Wait, let them try. They might just hit the page. They might just grab it. Or they might kind of, like my boys for a little while have actually been turning the page. So that's a skill that you just kind of, at, at every single page turn, again, repetition. Just like with the spoon feeding, you're gonna give many spoons to them. With a book, there are many pages to turn. It's an opportunity for repetition. They'll hear that phrase a lot, turn the page. Okay, when we're done, close the book and just give them the opportunity to close it or open it or turn the page. So again, you wanna give them an adequate amount of time to process. That's where the turn taking comes in. Pausing, letting them process what you just said, turn the page. That's a simple sentence. 
jumping in from the future here, I just wanted to add something really quickly, then I'll go and you can continue watching me the rest of the video. I wanted to say, please do not dumb down your speech for your babies. For example, don't say things like, baby turn page, you do, mommy do. Like all that kind of stuff actually has been shown by the research time and again to hinder language development and confuse the baby. And it has been proven time and again that using the correct, complete grammatical structure of sentences with babies helps map onto their brain like appropriate syntax and grammar, if you know what I'm saying. Syntax is one of the domains of language and babies are not gonna be speaking in sentences for quite a while, but what their brain is doing is processing it. So if you are constantly saying these broken sentences to your baby, it's confusing them. So don't do that. Don't be one of those people. You can totally keep it simple. You don't wanna overload their little brains. Keep it simple, but keep it grammatically correct. So you wouldn't want to say, Gabriel, can you actually turn the page for me? And then close the book, put it down, and go get me that toy over there. Now that obviously is way too much. You want to keep it simple, but by keeping it simple and grammatically correct, you're actually teaching the baby to prioritize the content words. Turn page. He's picking out those words and he's understanding the action paired with a grammatically correct sentence. That's a long way of saying, don't dumb down your speech for your babies, but I just wanted to put that in here because it's important to note. Like if you're taking what I say in this video as like basic sentences and basic commands as dumbed down commands, then no, that's not what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm saying uh, simple but not dumbed down, if you know what I mean. All right, let's keep it going. That you're, again, teaching them comprehension, receptive language skills. Wait, oh, turn the page. That's how I'm gonna get to my next page. Okay, so the next activity is also during story time. Here's what I recommend you do. Pick a book that your babies respond to. Could be Good Night Moon, could be my Bumblebee book, could be anything that they seem to just love and actually pay attention to. Read it every day, read it multiple times a day. And as you read it, use the same intonation every time. Bumblebee, the way I do it, Bumblebee, Bumblebee, who do you see? It's a baby bird, as small as can be. What's a baby bird say, boys? I seriously read this book. I mean, I've been reading it to them since they were born, but I read it the same exact way every single time, which now lets me be able to do something where I drop the word out and let them finish the sentence or let them kind of respond. Again, we're doing turn taking here. So if I say, Bumblebee, Bumblebee, who do you see? It's a baby. <gasps> who is it? And they're like, ah! and I'm like, bird, as small as can be. And I just get real animated. And that way, if they have that repetition, if they know what's coming, and then you drop that word out, they'll be like, what, whoa, what happened here? I got to fill this in. I got to say what she just forgot to say. So that's an activity you can do all the time. It doesn't have to just be during story time. Like if you're doing a bath, you could say splish, splash, something like very sing-songy. If you have some kind of a routine that you do all the time, you can start doing things like where you drop a word out that they're expecting to hear and then they don't hear it. They're like, what? what happened there? Then they kind of fill it in. It's a fun little back and forth. They won't say bird, but they will say, eh. and I'm like, that was really good. <laughs> so the last turn taking activity that I will mention is find something that your child is doing or saying, replicate it as they're doing it, add some meaning to it, 
and then turn that into a back and forth. So for example, my son was just tapping on a basin that we had the other day, just kind of slapping it. And so I was sitting right there with him engaged and I replicated it. I said, tap, 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 tap the drums, tap, 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 you do it. And we did this little back and forth thing where I tapped and he tapped. And it added a little bit of meaning to the movement that he was doing. So now he wasn't just simply slapping the basin, he was tapping a drum. That is, uh, you know, something that you can do. You can kind of repurpose their skills and turn it into something meaningful in a back and forth fashion. They get really excited about it. You can also do it with things that they're saying. So obviously if they're saying mom, 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 dad, 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 they're probably not talking to you, but you can make it so that they're talking to you. And you say, mom, 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 mama, that's me. You say it. And then you're going back and forth and you're talking. You have found something that they are capable of saying. So you don't want to ever take something that is too hard or out of reach at this point. You want to find something you know that they can say, you know that they can do. You kind of rework it, model it for them, and then turn it into a back and forth activity. And then it becomes like a little game. That wraps up today's turn taking video. And as I was talking, I was thinking of so many other turn taking activities. So let me know in the comments below if you want me to make a part two of this video or let me know some other skills or areas that you would like me to address in another video. I'm going to make more of these for you. So just let me know. Also feel free to ask any questions in the comments below. Reach out to me on Instagram. Uh, yeah, I'm very passionate about this stuff and I think it's going to be really fun to start talking about talking and communication and all that kind of stuff. Anyway, I hope this was helpful. Good luck to you. Now it's your turn. Go ahead and have fun with these turn taking activities and definitely let me know how they go for you and how your babies respond. Everything is good. All your babies need is love and this is just kind of like a bonus fun thing to do with your kids. They're going to be great. They're going to learn how to communicate just fine, <laughs> but this is just to kind of boost boost those skills, stimulate their little brains and kind of make it a little more fun and purposeful for you. But yes, anyway, I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Bye.